Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at how we can actually use a CSV file in Java to read information and then hopefully uh, do some analysis and fun stuff with that. We're going to go ahead and start off by um, actually looking at the information we have to work with so we can uh, put that together. It's pretty uh, simple. I'm going to be using a CSV file of some Broadway statistics to actually do over this and so I'm going to take a look at that file really quick. As you can see right here I've got my Broadway demo.csv file. It's just opening up here in Excel and as you can see I've got um, a couple different columns of information and I've got some numeric information as well as string information I need to get, in, uh, get that data out of the system. So I want to be able to actually access that inside here. So I'm going to make sure I can use this. As you can see right here, I have some just easy uh, to use names explaining what the types are on that as well. So I can have the access to that. There are a few different uh, files we have to make to actually work with this. We have to have a, a file for our model of our information. We have to have a runner, of course, to start our project. We have our controller, which is going to be used uh, to actually start and interact with our program. And then we have a file we're going to use to do the data reading on that. Um, I like to make small files that do simple things pretty well. So we've got a couple different files we're working with as we go ahead and do this. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is make our runner and we're going to put an empty public static void main inside that. As you can see right here, I've got my runner.java. It just has one single method, public static void main. And right now that's all it has to have is just that. We'll go ahead and go in more detail on that later. Then we have to create our model data so you can actually read and work with that information. And so we're working with Broadway um, information, so I call it Broadway.java, making sure that's what we're talking about. As you can see right here, I've got data members that are private for each of the different things we're working with. And so I have a data member for each of those, and it's just start year, show name, theater, type, attendance, capacity, gross earnings, and performances. So I've got um, eight different pieces right here that we're working with on that. I've got a parameterized constructor is the only constructor I have in here because I want to make sure I initialize this um, very easily. And so I use the same order I have up here in the declaration section as the same order for my um, parameters of my constructor. And I just initialize each of the parameters into the data member right there. Pretty easy. I also have uh, getters for each of the different components so I can actually access those information. And so I just have a, a getter for each of those. It's the standard approach where it's public, the return type, and then the name of the thing with uh, prefix with get. It just returns those values with that. Makes it really easy. I, however, do not have any setters inside here because we don't want to actually modify the data we're working with. We simply want to access that information, so we don't want to change it at all. So I didn't write any setters or mutator methods at all. But I do have a two-string method so I can easily get information about that. And just a two-string right here, as you can see a description, it says the Broadway stats for the show in the year at which theater and how many performances it has. This way I can easily demonstrate what's inside here if I print out any information or display information to the user so we can look at actual just one thing at a time. And so that's all we have right there inside our model class. It just has the information we need to work with for that so we can actually go ahead and put those pieces together. The next thing we have is we're going to be working with our data uh, reader class. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that really fast as well. Our data reader class is the tool we're going to use to actually read information in from the file that we can access later on inside our project. We're going to start off with the imports because it's the first thing we have to actually read and access inside the file. As you can see right here, I've got four imports we're working with. We have to import java.io.file, java.io.file not found exception, java.util.arraylist, and java.util.scanner. Uh, the file and the file not found exceptions are so we can actually work with the file itself. Arraylist is so we can store the dynamic data we're working with, and scanner is so we can process the text that's inside that file very easily. So as you can see right here, my public class header data reader, and it has two methods inside it. I have a method called handle error and a method called read data. We're going to take a look at the handle error method first. This is just to make sure that I have a way of dealing with any errors that might possibly occur when we're reading the data. And so it takes an exception as a parameter, and it says system.print when the following error was caught, and then error.get message. So I can actually get information from that, and I'll prevent it so that my program doesn't crash when I run it, but I can see why that program is not working. Let's take a look at the um, read data method that we're working with. As you can see right here, it is a public static method. We're making it static because this information doesn't need to be maintained as a set of state. There's no information internally we need to keep track of on this. And so we're making it static so we can use it as a class method that we can call simply just by saying data reader dot and then read data. Because we don't need to make an instance of a data reader. We simply just need to call this method. It's like a utility method. That's a great way to practice using state for um, not using state for this. And so the first thing we have is it's an array list type method because we don't know how much data is inside the file. So we have to have a dynamic data structure to easily work with that. We're gonna use an array list of type Broadway since that's the model data we're working with. And I'm giving it the really creative name of read data. The parameter it is passed is a file name we can use to actually open up that file. And so that's what we're working with right here. Uh, the first and last thing we do inside our method, we declare an array list of the type we're working with, in this case, Broadway. I'm giving it the creative name of data list. It's a new array list with nothing inside it right there. And I return that line right here at the bottom to make sure that's handled. I then need to initialize a file instance. I'm gonna call it data file because again, I'm using just creative names. And I initialize the file passing it the file name parameter we just sent in as a parameter front to the actual method call itself. It initializes that file. This doesn't access the file at this point. It simply just makes it so here is a reference to it. Now that we've got that file created, we need to be able to actually read through that file. And this is where the scanner tool comes into play. We're using the try with resources block right here where I have try scanner file scanner is a new scanner passing the data file. And this means that it's gonna automatically close that scanner when we're done with it automatically so we don't have to worry about any data corruption or exposure to inappropriate security violations. 
So the try with resources right there initializes file scanner and that uh, file scanner variable is in, available through the entire try block as a variable we can use. So it's a nice variable we can use and it automatically closes it for good security and data practice reasons. Now we've got that uh, scanner created, it's going to try and actually load it. If it um, has an error, it's going to give a file not found exception, which gets called by that handle error method. And since this is a static method right here, this method handle error is also static, which can be called from, of course, another static method. Now that we've got my scanner access, I want to go ahead and create an array list of string called lines. When we look at a CSV file just by opening up from plain text, it's just rows of values separated by commas. We're going to use the scanner to read that text and then parse that out and actually work with it. So I'm going to read it one line at a time, and so scanner um, is already there, it's loaded. I'm going to say array list of string lines this is a new array list of string with an empty constructor. So I've got now an array list of strings that I can work with. And then as long as file scanner dot has next line, is there another line inside that I can actually read through and read each line at a time? I'm going to do lines dot add file scanner dot next line, which reads an entire line in and puts it inside the array list of string that we're working with. And because we don't know how long it's going to take, that's why we use a while loop, because we want to actually grab those values and get all of them until it's done. Now that we've got all the values, we're now going to use a regular for loop to process that information. We take a quick look though right here at this for loop, you notice that we're starting our index out at 1 and going up to less than size. The reason we're starting off at 1 is that first line of the CSV file are the header information for that. If we take a look at the uh, CSV file again right here in Excel, you can see that first row is the header information for all this information. So we've got, oh, that information is what we want to do. So we want to skip that row when we're actually looking through that. So we go ahead and take that off. So that's why we start index off at one. We don't read the first, the zeroth line, but we start at the one line, the second line inside that array list. And we want to grab that information as we go through that file. We're then going to use the um, get that each line out of that index, store it inside a string variable, which is a local variable called line, well, lines dot get index. And then we use the dot split method, which takes a uh, delimiter as a parameter, in this case a comma, and creates a string array of values. So that means every single value inside that line of text gets its own value inside a string array. So we get all the values with that. And so in this case, we have eight rows. So we have seven, um, zero to seven on values on that. And so I have my year, my title, my theater, my type, my attendance, my capacity, earnings, and performance. And I just grab all those out. Because the um, numeric types aren't strings, I have to use the integer.parseInt or the double.parse double value to actually extract those values. These ones all happen to be int values, so I'm just using integer.parseInt for that. And I pass it as a parameter, the index of the array we're working with. And so I just start off at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I grab all those values for each row that I'm working with. I then use that parameterized constructor, so I have my Broadway model as a new Broadway, passing in those values I just extracted. I add that new model instance to my array list of, date of my model object. In this case, they're Broadway files. And of course, that iterates through all the uh, rows inside that structure. I grab all the file information out of that. And then my last line of code, of course, of that method is to return that data list that I have access to. So that's what we do inside our data reader. Now we've got my uh, model data handled. I've got my data reader worked with. I need to be able to actually access that information inside my controller. So I'm going to go to my controller file. We're going to take a look at that right here. I have a public void method called data demo load. So my array list of Broadway is of right there and has demo data. And it has data reader dot read data because it's a static method. So I use the static method initialization structure. So I do the class name dot and method name. And I'm just passing it the uh, path of the file right here broadwaydemo.csv. And if I take a look inside my project in Eclipse, you can see that my um, file right here, broadwaydemo.csv, is just right inside the project folder of that. If you want to do more advanced uh, working with that, you can specify an actual full path on there using the directory information. But because I'm just doing this quick for a demo, I just have it in the same directory as my project itself, so it's very easy to find. So I read that file into my array list. I'm going to use a system.println to say, hey, how many files did it actually read? So I can get an idea of what's inside that. And then I'm going to use a for loop. I'm going to go ahead and iterate five times to grab different values out of that. I'm going to use a random number so I can just get one thing in there. So I'm going to take a random index by doing math.random times data de uh, demo data dot size so I can get a random value that's valid inside that. And I'll extract that current one from the list and print out the information about it, saying what row number it is and the detailed information for that individual row. So that's how we have to do to make sure that happens. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we do. After playing this, you can see there's 31,296 entries in that file. At row 1137, the Broadway stats for the King and I, uh, 96 and 1996 at the Neil Simon Theater with eight performances. Row 6,198, Chicago in 2008 performances. Uh, 19,601, Hedda Gabler in 2009, zero performances. 12,436, uh, Chicago in 2004 only had eight performances. And 16,806, 
that day they had eight performances as well. And so there's more information inside here we could actually take a look at and do, but we can see that we actually are able to load that information. We can go ahead and use this information to go and find out actually more detailed stuff and re, uh, use it by using the accessor methods inside the broadway.java file using the get attendance, get type, get theater, et cetera. We can actually find and do analysis on that by calling that um, those methods and getting information from that. But that's something you could do on your own to actually get information about the project itself and do some cool things. But all we have to do to make that happen, again, is we make a reader file we can go ahead and read that file. We use an array list to grab all the information. We get, um, we have an array list of the type we're working with. We get an array list of string to process each string inside that. We parse through that using a while loop to grab every single row outside of the file as long as there's a new line to read. Then we use a for loop starting at index one to grab individual rows other than the first one and turn those into the object we're working with. We use the integer.parse, double.parse, double, or boolean.parse uh, boolean methods to actually grab the values out of the um, primitive information and store it inside a primitive variable from the string if there is something like that in there. We then create our instance of our object like that and put it inside our array list that we can then access and use later on. I hope this is a helpful tool you can use to do some cool stuff. Cheers and see you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.